Good evening and welcome to the fourth episode of A Closer Talk. I'm Betty van Langendonk and I will be your host tonight. This fourth episode will be the last one before we take a summer break. And our guest tonight is Koen Maas, General Manager of Brussels Jazz Orchestra. Good evening, Koen. How, How are, are you? you? I'm fine. It's a rainy day today. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, tomorrow, next week, the sun will be back, I guess. Yeah. So um, I will ask you some questions tonight about your job at the Brussels Jazz Orchestra, which you have been doing for a long time now. Um, if I'm correct, you've been working for the orchestra for 20 years. Could you tell us how this started, how you began working for the orchestra? Well, indeed, it has already been uh, 20 years that I, since I started with Brussels Jazz Orchestra. And uh, well, it started yeah, quite, quite, quite funny, maybe. Uh, um, I studied music, I studied trumpet uh, at the uh, Lemons Institute in Leuven. And uh, while I was a trumpet player, uh, I was always in love with big band music and I played an amateur big band orchestra since I was 15 or 16. And then, uh, yeah, my dream came true that I could study music. I studied classical trumpet at the time in the Lems Institute. And uh, in, the, in, the, in that conservatory in Leuven, uh, there was also a, a conservatory big band. And mm -hmm. uh, they were always uh, lacking some trumpet players. There, there were not enough uh, jazz trumpet players in the jazz department. And then they had to shop in the classical department for <laughs> additional players. And uh, that's how AI came in uh, in the orchestra. Uh, and uh, well, the, the first year when I was in Leuven, uh, it was Bert Joris who was there conducting uh, or leading that band. And afterwards, it was uh, Frank Vagani, uh, who we all know, of course, as artistic leader of Brussels Jazz Orchestra, uh, who was uh, conducting the band. And that's uh, where my relationship with Frank started already more than 20 years ago, if I remember well, it will be will have been 24 years ago. But then uh, I finished my studies and uh, yeah, I started to look for a job. Uh, I teach a bit in a music school, but suddenly I discovered a new world, the world of music administration, and I had the opportunity to uh, to, to, to work for a string, a classical string ensemble, uh, which is called uh, Ifia Mingi, uh, which was mm -hmm. uh, an orchestra by uh, conducted and, and the artistic director was Rudolf Werte. Uh, it was a great ensemble, very high level. Um, but they did once uh, a project uh, with a jazz orchestra and it was the jazz orchestra of the Concertgebouw, uh, our Dutch colleagues. And uh, I was so in love with that project that it was finally my kind of music. And uh, <laughs> as, as a young guy, I asked them, uh, do you have an opportunity for me to join in your administration? Can I do something? Unfortunately, they had no job offer, but they, they knew that Brussels Jazz Orchestra was looking for additional support. So uh, then I uh, yeah, contacted Frank to ask uh, yeah, if, if they would be interested to hire me. And uh, well, uh, that's where that uh, job interview ended and my career in <laughs> Brussels Jazz Orchestra started, yeah. Yeah. So then you do, you started with the orchestra, but you didn't immediately start as a general manager. You... No, um, I started uh, first as um, yeah, an assistant of the manager. At the time, there was a different manager, but uh, already some months after I started uh, with the orchestra, he left. And then uh, the position of uh, a manager uh, became available. And I thought, OK, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity because uh, I knew how high valuable, how high the artistic level was. And uh, yeah, that was really one of those moments that you have in your life. Now you have mm -hmm. to jump or you will never get such an opportunity anymore. And um, I decided to jump. Uh, I didn't know anything about uh, management, uh, running a business, because finally uh, running an orchestra is like, like running a business. Uh, so I had to, to learn that by experience. But uh, well... 
they didn't fire me yet so i think uh, <laughs> things worked out quite well uh, yeah yeah I but so. it must have been uh tough the first few years to get a hang of the job to know what you have to do how did you experience the first years of being a manager well yeah uh i talked with many people uh many people who were already working in the field uh i also had good conversations with with uh the people of the werf at the time rick bevernage who was unfortunately unfortunately not with us anymore But uh, yeah, it was mainly uh, a combination of talking with people, uh, gut feeling. Yeah, I think a lot of gut feeling, <laughs> uh, and you know, uh, the, the 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 technical stuff or, or administrational stuff of running a business. You can you can learn that. Uh, you just have to 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 ask enough people uh, enough questions, and then yeah. uh, I think yeah, then then then. Then you can do that more or less yeah yeah because what are the those tasks is exactly of a general manager if we have to picture uh the tasks of a general manager for brussels jazz orchestra what do you do mainly well um i think that the the, the strength of the combination with me and frank is that uh, i have the advantage uh also of, of of being able to think like a musician because i used to be mm -hmm. one uh that makes life quite a, a bit easier sometimes it's very easy to to anticipate on 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 certain issues because i know how uh, what 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 uh, the, yeah the feeling will be the general feeling or uh, what what uh, the the reaction of a musician can be but Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, my 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 work is is a combination of of strategy, strategy planning. Uh, we have two colleagues. Uh, people might don't know it, but uh, it's a bit uh, strange to do this interview with a colleague of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny. Uh, but yeah, I try to coach my team uh, to 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 guide them. Uh, I have to keep an eye on the finances. I do the subsidy applications. I do the sales of the orchestra. Uh, I do a lot of the general coordination. We used to have uh, a colleague who was uh, focusing on production work. Unfortunately, he is not anymore with us. So for the time, uh, at the time, I, I do that uh, aspect too, uh, which is in these COVID times, uh, not so intense as it used to mm -hmm. be in non-COVID times. Uh, I I assist and, and help the, the board of directors uh, We are an association. There is some administration involved with that. I am the contact with the, the accountant. Uh, I do the networking. Yeah, it's it's a, a very broad <laughs> package of, yeah. of tasks, uh, which makes it, of course, very interesting uh, and and very uh, uh, yeah. Every day is different almost. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a very diverse job. But if you would be planning a brand new project now with the orchestra what were what would your role be uh in developing that project what would the different steps be until the orchestra is playing on stage well yeah i i i don't have a kind of a roadmap of paper where <laughs> i can check my bullet points but it, it all starts with an id and that idea can come from musicians or from frank or for myself uh If the idea comes from myself, that's the, the easiest to, to give you these the <laughs> steps. The first thing I will do is talk with Frank. I have I need mm -hmm. his support. He has to believe in it. Uh, and if he believes in it, I'm pretty sure that the orchestra will will believe also in it. Uh, that's that's the support uh, that we need for projects that 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 we need in in in, in our organization. To be uh, I, uh, that support makes a project already successful, even not a single note is written or played. So that's yeah. very important. And then, uh, yeah, the next steps is uh, to to make a concept of that idea, uh, um, to make to to find a story uh, around it. Because uh, just playing music, unfortunately, these days is not enough anymore for audiences and and venues. Then we were. I, there's a lot of communication involved in 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 our work, I guess. And of course, I have my colleague Betty who uh, works then uh, <laughs> on on the communication of the project. And then, yeah, of course, when we when we have the concept there, when the 
eventual guest artists and composers and arrangers are approached uh, when when we see that that people are available to collaborate with us or willing to collaborate collaborate with us, we have of course to negotiate on the finances and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then I have to sell it. Um, I, I go to to our, our partners in Belgium. I go to our partners abroad. Uh, it, it's it differs a bit from project to project. Some yeah. projects are more successful international because uh, the the story is more universal uh, than than other projects who might be more local. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, we have to try to, 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 to sell it, to find maybe an agent uh, that helps us uh, to spread it out, to spread out the word. Um, and then it comes to, to the production level uh, where when uh, we have a concert date, uh, when we have to, 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 to check if all the musicians are available, to book the travels, to book the hotels, to organize everything that everybody knows because we are, when we are traveling, we are more or less a, 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 a traveling party of 20 people, which is already quite yeah. some. So that asks also some organization, of course. And then, uh, voila, then we are out. <laughs> and then uh, the last and most uh, uh, interesting and nice thing to do is that I can uh, uh, invoice the, 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 the final invoice to, to, to the organizer <laughs> and, and uh, do all the financial administration towards the musicians and the artists and, and all other uh, fiscal administration that uh, comes together with that. So that's more or less the... the, the different steps and uh, process yeah 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 in in organizing or bringing out the new project with concert dates of course there are much many more steps uh, depending yeah, on the yeah, project yeah. if it's recorded if you want to release it uh if there's a, a, a video recording involved uh if there's any sp if we do a collaboration with with uh Another art form, uh, like like theater or s uh, classical music with a, a symphony orchestra or stuff like that, there's a lot of uh, additional communication. You have to align with those companies. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 quite quite a journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand that. Um, so um, I'm just thinking about what, what what I was going to say. Yeah, so uh, you were telling that when a project starts, it comes from you or from Frank, but how often does it happen that one of the musicians or maybe even an external artist asks you to collaborate or has an idea for a new well, project? It's not exclusively for me and Frank. It's a combination from, from Frank, for me, and also from, from musicians from mm -hmm. more musicians, from, from guest musicians. So it's very hard to make a percentage, uh, but it, it also comes together with, okay, if, if someone suggests a project, uh, yeah, for which you, you, you really have to think well in advance which audience is targeted with this kind of project, but also which kind of stages, venues, festivals are targeted with that sort of yeah. project. Is, is there a chance of bringing it out in, uh, on, on an international level to international stages to travel with it? Uh, do we really choose to do a project for one, one single shot or a single concert or do we want to make a series of it? Do we want to tour with it? I, those are so, yeah. There are so many parameters that, that uh, make it uh, not so uh, easy to say how, how uh, yeah, how many projects come from us or from others? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. So that, that, and, and then we have to to uh, to see in the in the strat strategy the 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 mid mid uh, long term or the long term strategy. What's what's the 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 uh, yeah? How many projects do we have uh, for for national stages or how many projects do we have for international stages? Uh, yeah. So that's that's a really a, a balance that we have to make. Yeah. And that's a quite tough, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how do you say in English? Uh, it's a, it's 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 quite challenging for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I assume in the twenty years that you've worked for the orchestra, there must have been very exciting moments. Also, what's the most exciting project that you've experienced so far? Well, uh, yeah, of course, there are exciting moments. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, every every time, that may, may sound very cheesy, but 
every time that, that we can bring out this orchestra on the stage, that's 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 almost like yeah, a victory or a party, mm-hmm. even after all these years, because I you really have to be committed as an organizer to hire a jazz orchestra. It's it's a, because it's uh, so many people, it's high cost. The, the genre is, is not so popular. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not pop or rock music. So you really have to be committed and, and, and uh, as a programmer to program, the, the audiences also have to be committed, of course, to come out <laughs> for us. But uh, yeah, so in my opinion, almost every concert is, 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 uh, is, is uh, an achievement on its own. Yeah. But uh, of course, I have some projects that are much more uh fascinating for me or events uh, because there's m- much more history for instance uh i i never forget uh the whole journey we made uh towards the the the, the grammy awards in 2014 we were nominated for an album uh with joe lovano uh um, to uh in the grammy awards and uh at that time uh frank and i traveled to los angeles and we were part of that whole Grammy circus, which was crazy. It was unbelievable, <laughs> never seen before. And it was like, 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 like uh, living in a dream, because of, on that moment, unfortunately, the orchestra couldn't join us. Uh, it was a pity, but yeah, I had the, the chance to be there. And uh, then I realized every second that I was there from, wow, I'm coming from <laughs> this little village in Limburg, in Lumen, in, in Belgium. And now I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here at, at the most important prizes in the world for music, the Grammy Awards. So unfortunately, we didn't come home with, with, uh, with the award itself. But, you know, they say uh, once Grammy nominated, you're nominated for life. So that, that was <laughs> super cool. That's true. <laughs> and then another event was, uh, and it's not because it was the last uh, concert before the lockdown, but uh, maybe people remember it. We played a, a double concert with the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra with Winton Marsalis in uh, Bulzar in Brussels. And uh, being a trumpet player or an ex-trumpet player, but still in my heart, I'm a trumpet player. <laughs> uh, the, uh, yeah, Rito Marsalis is 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 simply uh, every trumpet player hero. Whether you play classical music or jazz, I he, he yeah. plays the horn like no one else or almost can do. So uh, there was soup, and then that orchestra. I that's 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 uh, such a high level uh, orchestra that we admire so much. I it was really interesting to see the dynamics between all orchestra and theirs. Uh, because there was so many respect uh, uh, for more orchestra towards theirs. Uh, but then also you felt the mutual respect that was uh, mm-hmm. coming out. So that was, that was super. And then suddenly you find yourself shaking hands at that time. Uh, a couple of months ago, we still shaked hands. Uh, but, but we were also dining and, and, and having fun and interesting conversations. And afterwards he invited us. Uh, to join his worldwide concert uh, for our culture. And yeah. suddenly I received a phone call of the uh, Winter Marsalis came on my mobile phone. I, that's that's, that's, so, <laughs> that's, that's so, a dream. Uh, yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. But uh, yeah, that was, that was super nice. Yeah. <laughs> I have a and great I, I experience. I can continue for too. hours if you want to. <laughs> There's so many <laughs> other projects that I enjoyed a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've talked about uh, jazz and you said that, well, it isn't the most popular music genre. So how do you keep a jazz orchestra interesting for all kinds of audiences, for young and old? Well, yeah, maybe I, I should say it's not, not maybe the most popular because I, it's a niche genre. There are so many musical genres. And yeah. unfortunately, many people are just frightened by the word jazz, which is totally, <laughs> I, not, I, I cannot use the word ridiculous, but it's not necessary. They just, you just have to try it. And uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the kind of music uh, we make with the Brussels Jazz Orchestra is so orchestral and so uh, full of harmony and melody. So uh, I always have the feeling, even when people who don't know, uh, who say, I don't know anything from, of jazz, when they are sitting in the venue, attending a concert or at a festival, they're, they're, they're com- 
immediately they are enthusiastic about it. But we try to 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 lower the the first big step that might uh, uh, be there for some people to also to to, to work on projects where we combine uh, make combinations with other art forms. For instance, we have we made uh, a couple of projects with uh, silent movies. Uh, mm -hmm. We made projects with theater, uh, with uh, symphony orchestras with uh, graphic novels even. And all those yeah. uh, art forms do have their specific uh, audiences. And uh, of course, we hope by doing these kind of projects to, to, to trigger those audiences to come out and to discover what we are doing uh, as a jazz orchestra, but also, of course, what we are doing with the combination of, of uh, their art form and our art form. And then it yeah. just comes, uh, yeah, then the final result is to make a good project with with, uh, with added value for, for that, that, that you have, uh, yeah, a, a super nice story to, 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 to give to your audiences by, by combining and Yeah. And, and for instance, yeah, younger audiences, we now have a project uh, which we will record soon. Uh, which is called We Orchestrate Words, and mm -hmm. it goes more into hip hop. Uh, to, it makes a combination with hip hop and jazz. Uh, there's some soul into it. Uh, there's a DJ, uh, turntablism. So yeah, that's that's uh, also a, 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 a nice uh, manner to to find new audiences. And after all, uh, jazz is, is 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 the root of so much. Uh, and so many uh, musical genres these days uh, that is so popular, but yeah, sometimes people uh, don't know it or yeah, uh, are too f afraid of it, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And how do the musicians react when you propose an idea like, okay, we're going to perform with a DJ and uh, a hip hop uh, rapper and a singer? Are they enthusiastic or do they, how do they react when you? Well, first them? maybe they think for, oh, what will be this? But then uh, we we have a team of house arrangers. So uh, we, we work with a team of, of, of arrangers who, who and composers who make the music. And for this project, it is uh, Dieter, um, yeah. who is also an uh, alto saxophone player in the orchestra. And uh, that gives already a lot of confidence. And then, yeah, we, we, we try to, to find talent that is really, that can, that can uh, carry uh, or can, uh, yeah, it, it, it are big shoes to fill if you, if you, if you are a soloist with, with the orchestra, because the, yeah. the, the artistic level, musical level, we are, we are so <laughs> blessed to, to have so many talented people. But it can be very intimidating for certain soloists, and uh, yeah, then we ha then it's our job to find uh, uh, people who can think and, and make music on the same level, and and yeah, that's 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 uh, a challenge sometimes to 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 find uh, these these uh, musicians. But uh, well, if 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 everybody feels in the orchestra, okay, the, these are the talents. We check them out. Uh, we did some. Uh, yeah. If if we don't if they don't know the names they will Google them or Spotify yeah. uh, them, and and, and need uh, some reassurance. Yeah. Then then it works out. I I also remember once uh, because the the hip hop and DJ is a little bit closer maybe to jazz. We, uh, some years ago we did a project with Oriental musicians. And we made a combination of jazz with oriental music. And it were not jazz musicians, those are oriental soloists, but uh, they played really the traditional oriental music for mm -hmm. people from uh, Syria, musicians from Syria. And uh, But they were super high talented. We, we found uh, uh, Hannibal... Uh, who, who, who was the in-between uh, to, 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 to show us uh, who we should ask, uh, uh, to, to show us the talented uh, traditional people, because we don't know that musical language. And yeah, uh, yeah then it's, yeah. So he, he gave us the talents. And on the first rehearsal in the orchestra, they were saying, oh, what's, what will uh, come out of this uh, combination? But then those people started to play and some of the musicians, uh, they even didn't speak English. So the, the communi communication was not that easy. But 
you felt the musicianship and that's enough then the music speaks for it and then music is is a kind of universal language yeah and the respect is there and 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 boom it was fireworks yeah, yeah musical fireworks so yeah um that's that's the beauty of music uh, it can uh go further than than than, than the, the, the traditional communication that we have of language and then you have that electricity and that makes it if 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 yeah if a project has the electricity i don't know how i can describe it uh, differently than uh, <laughs> yeah you you have uh, a match made in heaven i guess yeah yeah, yeah. great so um music plays a big role in your life and your job for the orchestra is a full-time job but next week you're going on vacation your vacation starts how difficult or easy is it for you to not think about the orchestra for a few weeks yeah well <laughs> not to think about the orchestra i think that's quite impossible uh uh, well, I have a responsibility, and with that responsibility comes a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> thoughts. And 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 uh, yeah, you you always in my head. It's it's always turning uh, with 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 uh, several uh, situations that we have to to cope with. Uh, but I remember uh, a long time ago, uh, I I didn't put off uh, my cell phone during holidays, and on the second <laughs> day. I received a phone call from uh, an international musician. We were preparing a recording project, and uh, yeah, he, he asked me things, and I was I I I had to anticipate, and yeah, uh, my vacation was over, my holidays were over, <laughs> and since then I decided, okay, when I'm on holidays, I put off the cell phone, and most of the time it's possible, uh, but this year I'm afraid it won't be possible. We are experiencing such special uh, times uh, mm -hmm. during this COVID uh, pandem pandemic, pandemic, yes. Yeah. Uh, so I have the feeling that I have to be standby somehow. Uh, well, I'm not here, but by phone and by email, you can already do some stuff. Uh, of course, I won't be working uh, the full day, uh, but, but yeah. No, it's 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 always in your mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned uh, COVID nineteen and the the last few months, which have been hard for the cultural sector. But slowly things are moving a little bit forward, which we see. Um, but how how does the orchestra experience this? Uh, do they have a vision on the future, on the coming months? Uh, well, yeah, we will um, most probably not be able to perform on stage uh, this fall. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the restrictions, the regulations here in Belgium uh, for artists on stage, and especially for horn players, are very strict and uh, there's a requirement of a social distance uh, between horn players of uh, two mm -hmm. meters in between yeah. everybody from from uh, as they say heart to heart and from uh, for non uh, horn play I for the other musicians uh, drums piano guitar double bass they have to respect one and a half meter of social distance but that means uh, that with the full orchestra there's almost uh, no stage where we can show up the, the stages are, are, are too small our stage plot is, a, is, is is twice the width of the normal stage plot so we need a, a, a width of uh, 50 meters almost if i remember well and it's yeah if, if we if we if we check uh, the the schedule uh, the orchestra schedule of the fall, uh, there are only two stages that are so wide. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that makes it uh, quite simple, but super hard to say, okay, uh, it's impossible. And uh, the projects we have now ready are for full orchestra. It's not possible to, to quickly uh, rearrange stuff for a small band or on top. Uh, it won't be the BGO as people know it. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, well, what, what will we do uh, this fall? We will uh, record in a studio environment 
it is possible to uh, cope with this uh, sorry with the social distance uh, because uh, yeah there will be booths uh, for several instrument groups uh, there's uh, much easier uh, monitoring with headphones and stuff like that yeah uh, so we will record uh, most probably three projects uh, okay. and those are huge investments but uh, that way we can also prepare already a bit 2021 and of course uh, it gives us also the opportunity to, to produce content uh, for our online fans uh, because we want to stay in touch with them uh, otherwise everyone will forget about us <laughs> uh, and we don't want that of course yeah. we want to stay uh, connected with uh, our fans uh, and, and by creating that content video, uh, audio of course we can uh, yeah, we can keep the connection alive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just saying to the people who are watching now that you can send us questions for Kuhn if you have them. Meanwhile, we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, Kuhn's favorite BGO track, which you've chosen. Could you tell us what you've chosen and why? Well, yeah, uh, I, I, I choose a track, but unfortunately I was suffering with some technical difficulties. Uh, normally we would uh, play the track in, in this uh, broadcast, uh, but the track I choose, and uh, maybe we can add the link uh, of it yeah, uh, on we'll YouTube in, in the comments. I choose for the composition uh, Dangerous Liaison of Bert Joris uh, from uh, the, the album with the same name, Dangerous Liaison. And uh, well, it's 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 uh, it's uh, the composition for double orchestra, which means uh, for symphony orchestra, a full lineup symphony orchestra. It was almost ninety musicians, if I remember well, and wow. then the jazz orchestra, uh, the Brussels Jazz Orchestra. And this was a project that started up already in its first form, uh, I believe, in two thousand four or five. Uh, it was an, an idea uh, of bringing the bands together by uh, Jan Raas of the Philharmonie at the time. And uh, Bert made such a beautiful composition where, where every orchestra uh, performed its own uh, characteristic, characteristic role. Uh, the, the symphony orchestra, they stayed in the classical music idiom. And the mm -hmm. jazz orchestra, of course, played jazz. And that's a very important approach or a very important start. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite challenging for jazz musicians to play classical music. <laughs> and even more challenging, I'm very sorry, classical musicians, but for classical <laughs> musicians to play jazz. But uh, in, that, in that project, everything came together marvelously. And uh, it was... Uh, it's it's impressive. Uh, it's for me the perfect orchestra in general. Every orchestra would be would need a, a big band in its lineup. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I I love also uh, soundtracks and, and and music for films and and uh, yeah that that came that orchestral sound with with so many dy dynamics with with elite trumpet player with drums. Uh, uh, that came all in that dangerous liaison uh, composition, and uh, yeah, that's I think one of the most uh, beautiful things. I it's it's very hard to 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 to, but you asked, so I have to say what I, <laughs> what I love. <laughs> I love so many other recordings, of course, but uh, this one is, is is something very special, I guess. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll certainly post a link in the comments later. I'm just checking now if there are questions. This is exciting. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Well, I think we were no. very clear then, Betty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. You asked the good questions. I tried to give yeah, you the best apparently. answers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. So um, thank you, Kuhn, for answering those questions tonight. It was a pleasure. Um, I'm wishing you a very happy uh, and joyful vacation. Thank you. And to everyone who watched, thank you for watching. We. Uh, 
we have a summer break now, but certainly keep an eye on all our channels because uh, we'll be posting new videos and news uh, very soon. Okay, so good night, everyone. Good night, Kun. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.